Hey everyone, if you enjoyed this video, do make sure to like and subscribe and come hang out with us in Discord. Hey guys, it's Gene, and welcome to week one's MVP video. In Draft Rig, every week the Draft League commissioners watch all the battles from their respective leagues and nominate one Pokemon to be MVP of that league. For example, Sun Flygon went and watched every battle in the Premier League and picked one Pokemon to be the Premier League MVP for week one. But it doesn't stop there. Once we have the seven MVPs, one from each league, we put it to a vote to see who was the overall server MVP in week one. These server MVPs have had emojis made for them in the past, and these are some of the best emojis available in the Draft Rig server. So make sure your voice is heard and that you vote after watching this video. This video will also give you a chance to see some of the best performances of the week across all seven leagues. So make sure you watch, like the video, and subscribe so they keep me around. Thanks, guys. You guys are in for a treat here. The first submission from Peach League is Belly Bolt. And as you can see, this Espathra is really, really set up with almost maxed out speed plus three special attack and plus one special defense. It is a huge menace and very possibly can go on to sweep from here. But Belly Bolt has a trick up its sleeve. It goes for the Sucker Punch, which I didn't even realize it learned. That was incredible. I mean, all the spectators here are losing their minds. Great way to start off this submission and it will be back. All right, we jumped ahead here to the end game. And Belly Bolt's team is up 3-2, to two, but look what's left on the other side. There's a Marshadow, which is considered by many to be the strongest Pokémon available in the league, and a King Gambit, who's notorious for being hard to deal with in the endgame once its Supreme Overlord ability gets going. So, let's see how Belly Bolt weathers the storm here. Forces a switch into Gambit, which does get that 4 Fallen, and it takes some damage there. Gambit sets up a Swords Dance and it's just chipping away at its health. Uh, it's stalling out some Sucker Punches here, going for that Slack Off. Gets two right in a row. This time Gambit just hits with a Sucker Punch. And it dies to the Rocky Helmet, which hadn't been revealed yet. So now it's just Marshadow. It gets off a little bit of chip with Sucker Punch, Marshadow fully paralyzed. And again, a little chip. Gets off a Spectral Thief, which Belly Bolt lives amazingly, and Shadow's down to 1%. It gets parried, but the Sucker Punch failed. Marshadow must be going for Shadow Sneaks here. And he gets off a Slack Off, and that's going to be the game, as it takes down both of the last Mons with its incredible bulk and Rocky Helmet. Great play there from the Belly Bolt. Here in the Beauty League, we have Iron Bundle. And it's on a really cool electric terrain team, which is going to give it a speed boost every time it comes in on the electric terrain. Now, this Iron Treads on the other side is a huge problem for the electric terrain team because it also is going to get a speed boost every time it comes in on the terrain. However, Iron Bundle here right in the early game is able to land a Hydro Pump and take it out from full HP, which is massive for the rest of this game. As we jump ahead here, Iron Bundle is down 4-5 to five and is coming in to Revenge Kill. On the other side of the field is Ho-Oh, the bulkiest Mon, or one of the two bulkiest Mons allowed in this format, and one of the biggest threats in the entire game. It's a Regenerator Mon, so we could just switch out and get some health back, but let's see how big of a threat Iron Bundle is here as it closes out the game. Ho-Oh switches out on an Ice Beam, which takes this down to its Sash, and the second Ice Beam is able to finish it off. Iron Bundle now has two kills for those keeping track. And honestly, I'm just going to skip some turns here. We don't need to see Wish Protect stalling. It's pretty boring. But finally, he does try to pass off a Wish to the Deden here, which ends up dying to a Freeze Dry, wasting the Wish, getting a third kill for Bundle. Then ho -Oh comes in and dies to a Hydro Pump, a fourth kill for Bundle. And at this point, it is over. Both sides know it, so Alomola just uses Scald and doesn't try to stall it out. And that is the fifth kill, just Ogre Pawn left. And we are able to see the six kills by Iron Bundle as it lands an Ice Beam and picks off Ogre Pawn. 
that I think is going to be the only six kill submission this week. Great job from Iron Bundle. In the Brain League, we have Stack Attacka, who recently fell to C tier and now for the first time can use Terra, showing why it's still a big threat. And it comes in against a superior, down 5-4, to four, and is easily able to live through a hidden power and set up Trick Room. And now it's able to start doing work on the opposing team. They're trying to sub-stall, which is a good play, trying to wear out that Trick Room. And they get off a Glare, paralyzing it. Um, but now there's no protection and they're able to pick up their first kill, which gets that Beast Boost and a Defense Raise, which is going to become important later. Uh, they double out on Hono to scout for Stone Edge, which he has, and he gets a second kill and second defense raise. The Trick Room runs out, so Ho-Oh comes in, hits a Sacred Fire, but at plus two defense, it doesn't really do much. He does get fully paralyzed there, but no matter, it can set off the Trick Room now. And there's the Mega Evolution, but the plus two body press gets another kill. And there's just two mons left now. Deli Bird comes in, gets a speed raise, which isn't going to help it. Body Press takes care of that as well. And that's four kills in. With just Ho-Oh left, all he has to do is land a Stone Edge. He does get paralyzed the first turn. But here in the second turn, he's able to land a Stone Edge and get a useless crit. And that is the game. Great submission here. In the Muscle League, we have a nominee I'm very excited about, Zapdos G, which just so happens to be my favorite Draft League Mon. So it comes in here early in the game, down by one, and scares out the Mian Shao into a Mandibuzz, and just starts to click Brave Bird, does a nice 39%, clicks it again, 42, dodges a Toxic skillfully, and picks up a useless crit to finish off the Mandibuzz. That's its first kill. And this is just classic Zapdos G here. Game's gone on a bit, it's 3-3, three to three, and it's able to come in and just get a free revenge kill. Just clicks Coast Combat and takes the lead back for his team. It's such a good Scarfer. And finally, it's able to do it one more time, pick up the last kill as a revenge kill with Brave Bird, and that is the game. A nice clean three kills for Zapdos. In Stellar League, we have a very cool nominee, Bramblegast, and this is actually a Tailwind-based team because both Shiftree and Bramblegast have the Wind Rider ability, which grants them a plus one attack boost whenever they're under the effect of Tailwind or hit by a Wind-based move. As you can see, we've got two turns of Tailwind remaining here, so Bramblegast has its boost and it's ready to go. It goes for Terra Ghost. They use Protect, just trying to stall out that Tailwind, Good play, and it breaks through on the second turn and gets its first kill. Let's skip ahead to later in the match when Bramblegast comes back in to make some more plays. As you can see, the battle has progressed and Bramblegast is now on the losing side of things, down 3-5 to five, with a very set up Iron Valiant who has a Swords Dance and a Booster Energy Attack Boost. It's going to be hitting for massive damage. However, there's a Tailwind up, so Bramblegast has its attack boost as well. And let's let it run from here and just watch the end of this battle. A Terra Blast takes out the Iron Val from full, gets rid of that threat. And the Mega Venusaur from almost full. That's three kills now for Bramblegast. Uh, there's a really good double here from their opponent, who gets them in a bad spot with Tapu Koko versus Primarina. Uh, gets a huge chunk of damage done with Thunderbolt before dying to a flip turn. Then comes in Lunala, the S+, plus, but it just quickly goes down to a crunch, even through the Culberberry. Then Primarina comes back in, gets one more flip turn, gets back to the star of the show, the Bramblegast, who just cleans up the rest here. Shadow Sneak, full HP kill, and a weird Terra Psychic, Shadow Sneak, full HP kill. Bramblegast ends the game with five kills, what a fantastic performance. Okay, now we're gonna go to our second highest league, Victory League, and our nomination for Victory League is Moltres. And the reason it was nominated was really its matchup with the S Plus on the other side, Solgaleo. And so I want you to take a look at this situation here. We're already almost 30 turns into the game. Uh, Solgaleo is about to kill this 
Ursarang and Moltres is going to come in for the first time here. Uh, and so it's going to be a four versus four kind of as we wind down to the end of this game. And as you can see, the Solgaleo has already gotten up two agility boosts and it's at full health and it's massively threatening at this point. And so it, it really wants to try and sweep from here. We see it's a special Solgaleo goes for Thunderbolt and Moltres immediately scares it out, fearing that flamethrower that does come through. After that, we're going to jump ahead about 10 turns. It's now a three versus three, and this is the next time Moltres comes in. It's in a good position here against Tapu Bulu, um, but there's a lot of work to be done still. So let's see how Moltres helps finish out this game. Uh, Bulu is just going to click protect, trying to get some more recovery from that grassy terrain, but it's not going to be enough as flamethrowers still can take it out from there. So Moltres gets a kill. Uh, we've seen this all game where Sneasler and Golbat come in and face each other kind of to a stalemate. Um, so we see it again there. And on the U-turn, they make a really good play, actually. They try and catch the burn with that flame body um, on the U-turn from Sneasler. Unfortunately, they don't quite get it. So Silgaleo comes back in, takes a flamethrower, activates his weakness policy, and gets burnt, and goes for agility. So now... Solgaleo, super threatening. We saw earlier it's a special attacker, so the burn doesn't really affect it too much. Uh, it's at plus two speed and special attack, and has a real chance to just sweep the team from here. But let's see what Moltres does to prevent that. And it goes Terra Ground, having seen the Thunderbolt already, is immune to it, and picks up the two-hit KO on Solgaleo. The game's basically over from here, but for good measure, it lives the fake out combined with the dire claw doesn't even get status and picks up the final kill and that's how Moltres wins the game and wins victory league's nomination for mvp and finally we have the premier league and when i said earlier that there weren't any more six mon sweeps i wasn't counting this one because let's be honest it's a marshadow and that really doesn't count but nonetheless marshadow is the nominee from the premier league and as you can see here, there's a Calm Mind sweep underway by Tapu Fini. However, Kangaskhan is packing Roar, and unfortunately, it gets roared out into the worst possible option. Marshadow, the strongest Mon of the League, has super effective fighting moves to deal with Kangaskhan. That was just really bad luck. But let's watch the Marshadow Carnage unfold. It comes into his main counter, the Weezing, as Marshadow clicks Bulk Up and gets off a huge Spectral Thief at plus one, doing two-thirds of Weezing's health. It does have Haze, which is big, resetting that boost, but it's still enough to two-hit KO the Weezing G, its main counter. Then Tornadus comes in and attempts a double here, or maybe getting his Regenerator health back, I'm not sure which, but it doesn't quite work out here, as now Marshadow can set up another bulk up and still is able to take out the Torn from nearly full HP once it's at plus one. Mega Caesar comes in and clicks Bullet Punch, but Marshadow eats it with plus one defense and kills with a Blaze Kick for three kills. Then we have Scarf, Terra Fire, Infernape, who clicks Flare Blitz, but it's not enough after that defense raise, and Marshadow kills it as well. Then we've got the S Plus in Kiram Black, which gets annihilated by a Low Kick. And that's five kills from our shadow. And then we're back where we started. Low kick into Kangaskhan. And that is a clean six mon sweep. Thank you everybody so much for watching. All seven of our nominees did a great job. Please, please click the link in the description to vote on who you want to be MVP. The link is also available in the Draft Rig Discord, so you can use that as well. And we'll have the final results posted in just a couple days. So make sure you get on it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye.